Hey everyone, it's leftovers for dinner, and do you like my hair? Actually, I really don't care if you like my hair or not. Um, this is one of the primary hairstyles I've been rocking ever since I cut my hair short. This is the messy, tousled, beachy waves type look, kind of. Um, <laughs> and basically what happens is at the beginning of the week, I wash my hair really well and then I basically flat iron it, blow dry it, and wear it smooth for about one or two days. And then during the rest of the week, I use sea salt spray or beachy waves type spray, and I wear it all messed up and crazy like this for the rest of the week. And then probably Friday, Saturday, I'll wash it one more time and start the process all over again. Now, because of um, my hair, which is naturally frizzy and not a cute type of frizzy, I go through a lot of uh, the sea salt spray or beachy wave spray. And um, I've tried a bunch of different types, anything from Bumble Bumble, which is about like 25 bucks, to Not Your Mother's, which is what I'm using now and is in my hair now. Uh, Not Your Mother's runs about $7.99 to $11.99. Um, I traveled a lot so far in the past few weeks and those are just the two prices that stuck out when I had to go buy some. Well, I'm already out because I do this hairstyle often and I need more and I don't want to pay for more. So I'm going to go ahead and try to make my own. And uh, this is just the recipe I've come up with. Now I did do a bunch of research on a bunch of blogs and pins and Pinterest and stuff like that and a couple other videos and there's this basic recipe that's floating around and I've decided to come up with my own hybrid version. So I'll go ahead and show you guys my recipe and also give you some tips as to why my recipe is different and let's get started. So this is basically the recipe for sea salt spray on a lot of websites and it's going to be 8 ounces warm or hot water four to five drops of essential oil and that ranges all over the internet from things like coconut oil to almond oil to castor oil even found some saying using cooking oil but whatever uh, two tea uh, sorry two teaspoons of coarse sea salt or Epsom salt a teaspoon of gel and spray bottle Granny, you can do your own research you can find a bunch of different recipes with different items in them, but this is essentially the basic recipe. And I made some changes, so I'm gonna go over those now. Now, my recipe is eight ounces of warmer hot water, generous teaspoon of coconut oil, a teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt, a teaspoon of Epsom salt, one to two drops of my favorite fragrance oil, and uh, spray bottles. And I'll go ahead and go over some of that with you. Now, when you buy the sea salt sprays in stores, a lot of times they have a very refined and processed sea salt in them. So it's almost like putting regular table salt in your hair, which can be very, very drying. The more expensive brands of sea salt spray actually use Epsom salt, which is far less drying. Now, I did some additional research and I found that if you still wanted the sea salt feel, you could use Himalayan pink salt. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and mix one teaspoon of Epsom salt with one teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt. Now, if you're like me and you don't read the descriptions very, very carefully and understand the different grinds of salt, you may end up with medium grind Himalayan pink salt which as you can see is too big so if you have a grinder at home grind it up or you can do what I did and I took a few big rocks and I boiled them down in half of my eight ounces of water so that right there should be a little bit generous of eight ounce or um, a teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt and almost half the water I need for my recipe and it is warm which is good you're gonna need that I also have the rest of my warmed water right here now 
I'm using coconut oil. I'm using an organic coconut oil over here. And that's because coconut oil is awesome for your hair. There's really nothing else to say about that. It's awesome for your hair. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put my coconut oil, my generous teaspoon. Actually, that's the wrong one. Yes. Here we go. My generous teaspoon in my Himalayan pink salt mixture. And hopefully your water is still hot enough because you're not doing a YouTube video to melt down your coconut oil. And it looks like it's slowly melting. Now another thing I'm doing that you don't have to do, because coconut oil, some of them do smell very nice, some of them are almost scentless, you can add a tiny bit oops, of your favorite see if that's gonna go in there or not probably not of your favorite fragrance oil oh, and that was two drops right there that's plenty drops there now since this already has the Himalayan pink salt I only need a little bit of my Epsom salt let's go ahead and do that now And as we can see, it's still trying to melt up. Stirring helps. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna just do a little bit more. There we go. Okay. Now, as you can see, it's a little cloudy. That's fine. And some of the salt settled to the bottom. Now I'm going to go ahead and pour this mixture into my bigger cup of warm water to help mix it more. I'm pretty sure I blocked the camera for most of that. And now I'm going to go ahead and put it in my spray container. So. Because I don't have a funnel. Actually, I can't find my funnel. <laughs> now, with spray bottles, you can get them from, you know, the dollar store, Walmart, anywhere. You don't need a fancy one. But mine are usually about six ounces. They're not full size. So, I always fill up a travel container. There we go. Now, I'm going to dump a tiny bit out. As you can see, actually I'm not sure you can see, you can still see the coconut oil is pretty well mixed in there. That's good. Because if you start to see it separate, that means your warm water wasn't warm enough. And, you know, you might not evenly distribute it between the bottles. So... There you go. That's pretty much it. And I knew I forgot something. So, oops. <laughs> gel. You may want to add the gel afterward, after you've made the mixture. That way, the coconut oil can properly mix with the salt. And if you add it during the process, sometimes the coconut will automatically bond with the cheap gel. The gel is needed in your recipe to help hold your hair after the beachy wave style happens. So once you've filled up your bottles, go ahead and add a tiny squirt of gel in each one. Luckily my mixture is still hot enough so I can add a tiny bit of gel. And I am just using the cheapest unscented cheapo gel I could find in my closet which is good because I'm pretty sure the cheap geek needs new gel anyways. Ooh, it's that lovely gel sound. <laughs> I 
Okay, like I said, you only need a little bit. There you go. And now that the gel's in there, you will need to shake it up again. If you start to see your mixture separate, just shake it. Okay, and let's shake that one one more time. There you go, beachy spray. Now you can make little adjustments to your recipe, like during the summer, you can add a couple of drops of lemon to lighten your hair if you're going for like blonde streaks. If you do that, do not add the fragrance oil. The lemon and the fragrance oil may not interact correctly. You can also use, I think lime is another thing, and then you get that lime coconut smell. So yeah, that's about it. Um, try this recipe, share your own version, let me know how it works for you. And uh, thanks for watching.